How many of you are our Avon members? I love it every time. I love it. Many of you may not know this. We are uh, almost 15 years old. We reopened in 2004 as a nonprofit, thanks to Chuck and Deborah Royce. And we are so happy to have you here. Every opportunity that you can get to come to the Avon, we hope you'll take it. Uh, just a quick plug, we are showing the wonderful documentary, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, RBG, and a fabulous new movie, um, Ashley, help me out. Chesil, is that how you pronounce it? On Chesil Beach, a beautiful new movie. Uh, with Sorcy Ronan. So thank you for coming. I'm delighted to introduce the uh, executive director of the Greenwich International Film Festival, Ginger Stickle. Please give her a round. Thank you, Louisa. Um, on behalf of the Greenwich International Film Festival, I want to thank the Avon Theater for being a loyal partner to the festival since we started five years ago. Um, I'd also like to thank Berkshire Hathaway for presenting this special feature presentation of One Vote, and Emily Wachtel, our incredibly talented board member who helped us secure this screening, <laughs> and director Christine Woodhouse for bringing her film to the festival. This, uh, yes. Um, this is the last day of the 2018 Film Festival, and uh, I just want to say it's been incredible so far. We've been able to give a major voice to female artists, um, in including Christine and other talented directors, and I hope that you'll enjoy the events that continue from now through about 9 p.m. Um, we have programs that we're passing out, um, and you can learn more at GreenwichFilm.org. So thanks for coming out for the screening, and now I'd like to turn it over to Christine. Um, so you'll be spared comments because I'm almost choked up seeing this beautiful venue. We're so fortunate to be able to show the film in this space. Uh, this is the uh, final festival cut, and it's the first time that it will be screened, and I'm so proud to have it in Connecticut, which is my home state. Um, we, we screened an earlier version in Omaha and Nashville, but this is, is really the first screening of our final cut that we'll be looking to get distributed ideally in advance of the 2018 midterms, and hopefully we can, can help uh, inspire a higher level of participation in our elections going forward. I just wanted to thank also, in addition to the Greenwich Film Festival, in addition to Emily for having the amazing idea that this was the right venue for this film, in addition to Berkshire Hathaway, I want to thank my representative, Jim Himes, and his wife, Mary, who are here this morning. Obviously, he has so many things on his schedule. Jim, can you stand? So just, just honored, really, to have Jim and, and every person who's here. I, I hope you enjoy the film. Thank you. I also wanted to thank both the leagues in Greenwich and Stanford, the League of Women Voters, a wonderful nonpartisan organization that's mission really is to register people to vote. So please support the League, and they will be in the lobby afterwards, pick up some of their literature. And for all of you who know someone who's almost 18, get them to register. Thank you so much for coming and enjoy the film. I feel like I need a minute. Um, Oh, sh oh, sure. I never thought I'd say this in my whole life. Uh, Congressman Himes, here you, here you go. Well, good, good, good afternoon. I'm, uh, I'm just so thrilled to be here. And what an amazing surprise that you guys are, uh, are here. I'm, I, I got nothing to say other than I'm the, I think I'm the one guy in the room whose uh, job actually depends on that one vote. So thank you for, for what you do. And, and look, I'm, I'm just so thrilled uh, that... Um, uh, that Christine has done what she did here, uh, that the Avon is involved, the uh, Greenwich Film Festival. This is such an amazing uh, part of the country, and we don't have enough art. We don't have enough film. We don't have enough of this kind of thing. So I really want to say thank you, and I really want to say, uh, I'll just tell you a, sort of a personal thing. I've been, I've been in politics for 10 years, and I've been saying uh, voter ID is a real problem. But you know what? It's not nearly as much of a problem here in Fairfield County 
as it is in South Carolina and Kentucky. And until I saw those people for whom a voter ID really is a huge obstacle, I never quite understood exactly what I was saying. And so anyway, I just want to say thank you all for seeing this. Thank you for publicizing. We got to get this out there. Uh, you know, if an elected official can sit here and learn a lot, and by the way, be astounded by the conviction and the energy uh, and the intentionality of people like you, a lot of Americans need to see this film. Thank you. Okay, Christine Woodhouse, you got to grab your mic. Um. Thank you guys for staying. Yeah, I, I thank cried you for staying. Again. I cried again. I today. cried too. I, I cried too. Um. To pull ourselves together. <sighs> okay. So how did we get here? How did you do this? One of the things that we were thinking about when we were pulling this film together was how contentious the primaries were, right? And uh, the, the campaign running up to the presidential election in, in 2016. And we actually thought of this film as uh, documenting the end of that period of partisanship and the election as a healing. So I don't know if you noticed, but many of the stories, well, each of the locations where we filmed, we took cleansing shots. You had a lot of people washing their hands or uh, uh, wiping down a bar or doing things like that because we had visualized the film to be a nonpartisan celebration of voting and of the passion of voters from obviously very diverse walks of life and um, just a healing uh, episode. So obviously since the election, it hasn't felt as much like a healing period in the US as we had thought. And there was a point where we thought that this film could become uh, a document of the polarization. And it was a lot of work to keep it on that original intention. But I feel like we've all come around now, the distance from 2016, that we're ready for that, right? We're ready for that uh, celebration of the contributions of everyone to the process and to celebrate. You know, election day used to be a party in the US. It used to be a, a joyful day. And we, we wanted to capture some of that in Club Lucky, obviously, and everything that these guys brought to it um, in, in Omaha and Mr. Buffett. Um, and you know, this is where we are. And we're hoping that we can use this film to present another side, a contrasting side to the, the day in and day out uh, politics that we hear. Uh, our editor, our amazing editor, Jonathan Mullen, is here. And when we were in the middle of working on the film during the dark days, when we were not sure we were going to pull this together, um, Jonathan said something to me one day, and it, it was part of why we didn't quit. He's like, Christine, when I'm in here working on the film with you, I feel so clean. I feel so good. And then I walk out, and I turn the news on, and I just feel like I need a shower. And um, anyway, so the, there is an incredible amount of dignity and integrity and kindness in American voters. I know it is, I've seen it, and, um, and we wanted to, to share that. Okay, I'm just gonna ask a couple questions and then I wanna open it up because I think this kind of movie inspires that, this particular movie. Um, I noticed this time there's a lot of kids, children, in the film. Um, right. So, you know, when the footage came back, and, you know, we don't, it's not scripted, right? And I don't, you might not have been able to tell because of the beautiful editing, editing that Jonathan and my son, Seth Woodhouse, who's here, made it look like we had more than one camera. We had a single camera in each location, and all the footage was basically on one day. Um, but when, the, when that footage came back and we were pouring over to see what we got, I had noticed I had all these beautiful children. And... You know, I'm not that bright, so I was like, oh, it's too bad. I won't be able to use these kids in the film, right, because they're so amazing. But, you know, this is a film about voting, and children don't vote. And then it was maybe a day later, I was like, duh. You know, children are the future. That's what everybody is voting for. They represent what the election is about. And so we snapped and went the other direction. And I said, I'm bringing all these children in. And so there was a lot of intentionality in the choices that we made to show the McLeod children, the, the, uh, the children of Amanda and Jeff, the couple that had such a trial getting to vote in 
South Carolina, and obviously Brandon and Bob Bondi, the, um, the Bondi's son. And I think their faces uh, tell a lot more of the story of Election Day than you would just get by filming adults, you know, lined up at a polling place. You say you're not that smart, but uh, what a lot of people don't know about Christine and she doesn't speak about is that she's actually an attorney and she runs a hedge fund, which if anybody is in film here, and I know a lot of you are, it's incomprehensible to think of how you did this. So um, can you share a little bit about how you had a full-time job and, and got the idea and then, and then executed the idea and then got us here? I had a lot of support, actually. I had a lot of support. My family never once said to me, why are you doing this? You know, you're making all of us crazy um, with this film. And, and at one point, when we were kind of at a crossroads, uh, I took all the equipment from an office that we had rented in Brooklyn, and I loaded it into the back of my SUV, and I drove it over the Whitestone Bridge and up the Merritt Parkway, and I, we set up the project in our dining room in Connecticut. And at that point, I really didn't know if we were going to be able to finish this film or not, but um, I had an incredible amount of support. I think... Um, still. It, it, it still. And I, I think of myself a little bit just like one of those people that has gone out and said, you know what? I'm sick of this. I'm going to run for Congress, or I'm going to get involved in my city council, or I'm going to help get people registered to vote. Uh, this was my my thing, where I looked around and I said, I feel like I can make some small contribution, and uh, so just you know, you have to cowboy up and uh, and get through it. And I'm, I'm we're really happy with how the film came out. Yeah, we have big plans for it. Um, how did you find Michael and Brenda? How did you hook right. up with them, these people? How I know, right? Yeah. Because it's. With that. Can you guys please stand up? Yeah, and I mean, really. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Brenda, I don't want to put you on the spot, but it's going to be really hard for me not to ask you to sing something, you know? I know. How many people wait, have wanted wait, her to sing get, something, you we know? We might get Brenda Williams to sing for us. Um, I, um, I knew, I had this idea, this was like a dream for 10 years to make this film, but in order for it to work, I needed to find good characters, characters that you would find that you didn't care how they were voting. You were just rooting for them because you connected to them on an emotional level. And uh, so, you know, we talked to 20 or 30 different really interesting stories. And at one point, I wished I'd had the budget to film all of those stories and see what came back. But I think we found we found the right ones. And it, some of it was just luck, honestly. Um, I used a, uh, a high school research assistant who's now a sophomore at Yale. So it worked out for him. But he helped find both Brenda and Michael, and once I met these two, I knew that we had a film, and I just needed to find the, the other stories to, to fill in. Um, it was a big break getting Warren Buffett. Uh, yeah, I was just about to say, <laughs> how did you get Warren Buffett? Yeah, you know. to, uh, practice. Right? Next so question. How do you get to Carnegie Hall, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, we had to develop a lot of material uh, that you normally wouldn't do prior to shooting. I had to show all the other characters in the film. We had to cut together a trailer for the film, even though we had no footage, right, because Election Day hadn't happened. We had to, uh, I had to write a, a mission statement, what the film was going to be about. And I think for, uh, for Warren, like for our other characters, it was important to them that we were going to do justice to their stories and that this was not going to be uh, a partisan film. And um, so... In a way, all the work that he made us do helped the film in, in a way. We, we had to do a lot to, to bring him on board. Um, uh, but now he's a, he's a supporter of the, of the film, and he's going to be at some future screenings in D.C. and elsewhere, and uh, excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's interesting about this as a filmmaker is that documentaries, you typically think of like Amy or Nina, a one, you know, one person, whereas each of you could have had your whole entire... Yeah documentary so it's almost like it's a narrative feature except it's a documentary and it's not about a band yeah. you know except you are a band but you know what I mean I mean yeah, that, no, so is it, that talk about I that I think it's called bit. an ensemble duck yeah, ensemble, right and ensemble okay. duck is very go. hard to make so I to be honest I was watching Game of Thrones and I'm like how do they do that where you're yeah. jumping from story to story yeah. and that was the that was the challenge actually the footage was so amazing and uh, even though we only had a single camera in each location, so there was some very clever editing that had to be done to give it the feel right. of, a, of a full uh, feature, um, interweaving those stories and finding uh, not just the contrast, but the connections between the stories really um, was very satisfying. And I, I will say it worked on me. The, the way I thought the film might work on audiences, it actually affected me 
that way in watching it. I, I learned so much from watching the, hearing Michael's story and watching his passion and how much his one vote impacted not just him but his family. Um, and uh, so it, it, there are a lot of rewards in, in putting the film together beyond just having a product to share with you guys. Well, I have a lot of questions, but I feel like I don't want to lose people, so I feel like we should maybe open it up. And we have to, um, um, Dr. Williams and Michael and Brandon are happy, and Aisha are happy to, to answer questions about what it's been like to yeah. have a cameras follow you around. And these guys have been to several festivals, and we're just at one step on our journey. We, we have a, a ways to go with this, but I'm, I'm sure they'd be happy to answer questions. Yeah. Okay. That, that lady? Yeah. Oh, man, I can't see. I can't. Okay, sure. Can stand up. No, no, we're gonna. Wait, wait. We're giving you a microphone. Hang on, they're gonna hand you a microphone. I appreciate what you have done, but sitting here watching this, which was amazing, I feel that the purpose of the movie was to get votes. With having the right to vote comes a great responsibility in knowing what you're voting for. And through some of the people that you did get to vote, I don't see the education part of it. It's, I'll help you vote, or uh, I think you lost part of it, mm -hmm. because I feel there is such a great responsibility with the right. Thank okay. you. I think you might have seen that if we were more in depth, but the idea was to capture one election day across the United States, so we had to be a little bit superficial. I, I can tell you, um, we had in Omaha, we had the benefit of having all of uh, the five characters together in one place, including Warren, and to speak with each other. And I am, I was wowed by the thoughtfulness of the characters in this film and stories they told about people in their communities that vote. And it, it's really humbling, actually. It's easy to sit here in Fairfield County in, in, a, in a very educated bubble and um, wonder about the judgment of people voting in, in other states. I'm, I'm on the other end of that spectrum. I have a lot of, of respect for the wisdom of, of people across the, you know, red states, blue states, um, and we did intentionally stay away from kind of the coastal elites in this. We chose Chicago as our big city, as, as, as the heartland and the, like the literal center of the country. Um, I, I think the premise of the film is that um, uh, we, we're we all in this together. So I can tell Jim Himes one thing I learned making this film, how to win an election. I know. I know now how to win an election. It's have everyone vote. Have everyone vote. And get Brenda Williams. Yeah. <laughs> and if everyone I votes, want her everywhere. I, I, I believe, look, we're in this together. And it may, may not be the, the person that I want that wins every election, but if I, if I have the benefit of my fellow citizens' participation, I, I'm ultimately uh, coming out ahead in that process. And that, that's the theory of democracy, and, and that's what we're trying to, uh, to, to show in the film. Anybody else? Denise? We're actually sending a mic over to you right now. Okay. But I, I heard the thank you. So okay, hi, Christine. Beautiful film, I loved it, but I just have a question for you. What is your earliest memory of going to vote? Was it with your parents or, you know, when you turned 18? What, like, obviously there was something that really galvanized this in you early on, so. I'm I mean, I grew up in one of those households where my mother and my father always voted, but always voted differently from each other. So that was the conversation around the dinner table. I, I think there was maybe one election where they voted the, the same way, but, I understood that. They, they didn't just say, oh, well, we cancel each other out, so we're not voting, right? They, they participated. And I will say to that end, when I went back after we got the footage to get voiceover from each of the characters, and when you get people starting to talk about election days and their memories of election days past, it's their parents figure very prominently. I mean, I know Brenda learned a lot of her life lessons from her amazing parents, and I see that you don't see it in the film, but I see it having spoken with her, how much her parents are, are living on through her uh, determination and, um, and energy and kindness to people on, on election day. And obviously for Michael, we, we did touch on his mother in the opening words of the film, and that was intentional, that selection of his talking about his mother and how hard she worked to, to raise five children. When you see him after he votes and he says, 
almost the first thing out of his mouth is, I wish my mother was here. Okay, yeah. we can't talk about that anymore. But um, people do, there's something profound about voting that's not just, I think, about trying to influence an election. Whether it's about being counted or being valued as a member of society or symbolizing your vote representing 250,000 people in Kentucky and, and I think over 800,000 in Florida who are permanently disenfranchised as a result of a, a felony conviction. Um, and that's kind of what we were focused on uh, in the stories. We have someone back here? Okay. So many questions. I knew there would be. I just want to say, Dr. Williams, can I be you when I grow up? <laughs> um, I'm serious. You such a, such an inspiration. Um, this is such an important film. Um, I think every junior in this country needs to see this film. Um, every 17-year-old needs to see this film so they understand the importance of registering to vote. I'm just putting that in your, in your ear, that this is such an important and educational film that you should really consider opening it up and allowing um, high schools to show this film, even if it's a venue like Avon, to 17-year-olds so they understand their, the power that they have in their hands to vote. It's an absolutely brilliant film. And again, Dr. Williams, I'm gonna sit at your knee because I want to be you when I grow up. You, 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 <laughs> you know, you can be her now. That's the beauty of it. You can be her now. You yeah. do not have to wait. You do not have to wait. And truth, Truth, the original thought of the film was to make something that could be shown in middle schools and high schools to just remind kids of, the, of another side of election day. Our kids are inundated with so much negative media and we are gonna cut a scholastic version of this and make it available uh, in schools, hopefully. Um, but you know, and, and first the other, CNN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I do have a dream of a, of a national broadcast. Yeah, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. CNN. That's we're gonna get it job. somewhere. Yeah, that's my job. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Christine, I just want to thank you for the characters and presenting them the way you did. Um, I really uh, the energy of Dr. Brenda through the day just very inspiring, continuous all through the day, and Michael. Uh, thank you for your courage sharing your story for people. It's very personal. Uh, we're lucky in Connecticut that people can, with a mistake, they can uh, still vote. Um, I have a question for you, Christine. Mm -hmm. uh, you said there was one camera person at each place. Did, how much coordination did you do before they went out and shot on that day to make sure that the style, because the style throughout the whole thing is very similar? Yeah. Look, you, film, you don't make a film by yourself. I had really uh, amazing crews. We had really amazing crews. This was a joint effort, this film. Um, in each location, our head uh, director of photography, Gabe Elder, is a Connecticut guy, went to Wesleyan University. I literally called Wesleyan and said, I need someone amazing. And they connected me to a couple people and, and Gabe came on the project. So he coordinated across all the cinematographers to make sure that there would be some level of consistency. And you know, we came up with a shot list and we told people to shoot in the wide um, and that we would, they didn't need to try to edit with the camera, right, by popping around. And, and four of the five stories did that. Chicago did their own thing, so that was a challenge in editing. And look, it's a duck, right? So there's some places when you, you see little imperfections, right? Um, one of the editors told me early on, the one that I, that I got rid of so I could actually make the film, that shot where Brandon is on the edge of the bed and then he stands up and he goes out of the shot and then he comes back in. And an editor said, well, you can't have that in the film. You know, you have to cut that. And I was like, no, man, that's the whole beauty of that. He goes out, but then the camera finds him and we're, we're looking for something um, in the film. And so some of the, the imperfections very similar thing with a little boy in Omaha who comes up. I, I think I broke a rule with that one, right? Yeah. And puts his face right in the camera. I love and it. We love it. Some of those things in the initial edit, I left in there to, for my own, you know, amusement. But I just assumed they would find their way out of the film in a polishing edit. But no, all of the really fun stuff like that, uh, we ended up, we ended up leaving in. And it was a lot of luck. And the people that worked on the, on the film, I owe them so much. Some of them were unable to vote on election day. They gave their, the people that, that went to Alaska um, and you know, other people that traveled a distance to do the shoot. And I think we had a good meeting of the minds that this was an important project. And it's, it's reflected in the relative continuity across the stories. Oh, 
I, I was in New York um, on the phone, and uh, they were calling me, like, from South Carolina, and I said, Brenda did what? She sang in the penitentiary? They said, oh, she sang at the beginning and at the end. I was like, what did she sing? <laughs> that was not on the shot list, <laughs> you know. Um, and then they called from Kentucky and said, we're not going to, uh, they're not allowing us to shoot inside the polling place when Michael Heiser votes. And I just laid down on the floor, right? I, I thought, this is the one vote. I want to see the guy go into the voting booth and come out. And of course, his delayed response when he walks out of the school and, and receives the balloon and the flowers from his family and that little celebration is such a more profound moment than we would have just seen someone disappear behind a curtain. So some of those things that seemed like, like challenges um, ended up becoming gifts. Uh, we did have one trip to the emergency room in, uh, in Omaha and uh, one of the cinematographers had to go to the uh, clinic and get some stitches in the middle of the day. Something fell on his head. But we, we soldiered on, and in Chicago, they kicked us out of the room about halfway through the day. So you notice, you see the voters in the early morning, you don't see the voters in the, in the second half of the day. But, you know, we, do, we worked with what we had. We wanted to make a film. I think we have time for, like, two more, maybe. Oh. Hi, um, great, great documentary. Um, quick question. Was it difficult to keep the names out of the two opponents, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, out of the documentary? And were there conversations with the folks and, uh, to make sure that please don't mention their names? Right. So, Seth, did you want to take this question? So, so my son and I have gone back and forth on this. Um, we didn't, we could not tell our characters what to do on election day, and we, we didn't. You try telling Dr. Williams what to do on election day, right? We tried to order her day. She was like, Christine, Christine, this is what I'm doing. Y'all can follow me. That, that's, about, that's about it. So we wanted to make a nonpartisan film. We didn't want to suppress, you know, we didn't script it. We, it's natural. You see what happened. Obviously, the caribou scene, that was also a hard decision to figure out how to cut that and whether to put it in the film. But it was part of the day, and I wanted to honor those characters by showing, you know, what their journey to, to vote was like. We, there were surprisingly few references to the characters in the footage that came back, and we ultimately did um, edit a few things to keep the, the spirit. So I don't know if you noticed this, but we're very proud of this. The, the references of characters in the film, not radio, but characters in the film that mention names of the candidates, there are only two. In each case, it's out of the mouth of a child. Um, so Brandon tells his dad that his teacher said she hoped Trump would win, and we decided to leave that in. That was part of Brandon's day, experience in election day, and that was the lesson that he got in school that day, as opposed to the discussion about the electoral college, which he got in the car with his dad, right? Um, and as Brenda and her grandsons are leaving the polling place, very faint, you can hear her grandson asked her if she voted for Hillary. And at some stress with uh, other, other people, I decided to leave that in. One of the things that tells you is that I can tell you, Dr. Williams takes people to the polls regardless of how they're voting. It does not matter to her. I'm just telling you that is the truth. And that she's a physician. And, and her she's grandson didn't know who she was voting for. Uh, and he, that's why he asked the question. So you kind of understand that not everybody is that, is that partisan uh, on election day. Some people are committed to the process. And she was an example of that. And I just wanted to say that, you know, one of my, when they, came, when they asked me to do this and they came for the original interview, my thing was, look, I, I don't want to be shanghaied into some partisan thing. Uh, I don't, I, I've been used before like that. And, and I'd rather that not happen. And so she made a promise to me uh, that we wouldn't do that. Uh, it, it wasn't about who we were voting for. It was, a, it was about the power and the passion that one vote has to bring everybody together into one country, regardless. It doesn't matter what we're doing. This film depicts one special thing, and that one special thing only is, is that the right to vote means a lot to everybody, but it's different, right? Each individual person has what it means to them. And when we all do it together, we all become united. It doesn't matter over the arguing and the fighting. None of that matters in this movie. And that's the reason that I'm so proud of her and so proud of this film. 
right, is because that she carried that message through, she kept her promise. It's, you know, it's one way, right? This is one way. You can look at election day a lot of different ways. This is one, it's just one idea. And you know, you could make a beautiful documentary about felon voting disenfranchisement, felon disenfra disenfranchisement. You could make probably four documentaries just about Brenda Williams. You could touch on the voter ID issues. We tried to intentionally try to, those things are part of the fabric of election day, but we, we tread on them lightly and we intentionally, uh, I had some people say, Christine, you need to have somebody, you know, sitting in a library chair with books behind them, telling people what they need to know about election day and about voting in the US. And you could make a very good film with that, that's just not this film. This film is, we just show you. And even with our, um, Jonathan calls them the fun facts at the end, you know, we're just giving you a, a little summation of each of the stories and something about what it meant. But there's a, you know, I, my hope is that high school kids, if they see this film, they'll go Google it, right? They'll look up for themselves um, what some of these different laws are and, and how things are changing and what the rules are that are applicable to them, because obviously elections are state by state. Um, Brendan, yeah. Well, I okay. woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> I woke up with freedom on my mind. One vote allows us freedom. Just that one vote. Voting was not guaranteed in America for African Americans and people of color for Jewish Americans in the South who had to change their names from Steinberg to Green, to be treated as human beings in America, voting wasn't always guaranteed. In even decades after the voting rights was passed, voting rights bill, we're still having to fight for the right to vote. Every time I look at one vote, it brings tears to my eyes. I just asked my youngest daughter, Aisha, did you bring some tissue with you? And tissue is still not good enough because after I wipe my face so many times, that tissue turns into powder. So I should have brought a washcloth. <laughs> Let me tell you this. We have a job, a responsibility. We have to be accountable for ourselves. This is one of the greatest countries in the world. It is the greatest country, and we have a responsibility to uh, allow everyone the right to vote. And we thank God for having the ability for Christine Woodhouse to find us. And I must put in this young fella, um, Eric Benenhoff, interviewed me for this documentary. Eric is now a student at Yale, and he went to the ACLU to find out if they knew anybody that worked real hard with voting. And Professor Emeritus Laughlin McDonald recommended my name, and the rest was history. My husband Joseph sends his love. My other children send their love. And listen, God is able to do all things but fail. Voting is power. Voting is power. I am not following that up. No, I'm no, sorry. I, would, yeah. I would leave it alone. Yeah. So, so www.onevote.us. Keep an eye on us because we're going to let you know on the website where you can see the film. And I Thank promise you, Greenwich you this thing film. is going to be available. Thank you, Thank you, the Avon. Thank you, Berkshire Hathaway. Thank you, Christine Woodhouse. Thank you, Emily. There's no, there's no uh, Greenwich Film Festival without you, obviously. <laughs> 